Support for this episode is provided by Jonathan Green, Quality Lawns since 1881. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the shop. In this episode, I'll show you step by step how to build this planter. And as you can see, this planter has a turned detail at the bottom of the leg. If you don't have a lathe, you could also use this leg design option. And I posted a video on how to make this leg just a few days ago. And this leg only requires your table saw and your miter saw. I also designed this planter around this plastic insert, realizing that most planters rot from the inside out. And I'll have a link to where you can find this insert in the description below. Let's go ahead and get started. The wood that I'm using for the legs is Red Grandis. It's in the eucalyptus family and it's becoming a popular wood for exterior projects because it grows fast and is sustainably harvested. This is an eight quarter board and I'll get started by rough cutting it to length at 21 and three quarters. Eight quarter material usually measures an inch and seven eighths thick. So I'll rip the legs at an inch and seven eighths by an inch and seven eighths. Now that I have the legs ripped to width and cross cut to a rough length, I'm gonna cut a notch three and a half inches from the bottom of the leg and that should help to eliminate any tear out when I start to turn the legs. To cut that notch, I've set the fence at three and three eighths. That's accounting for the eighth inch curve of the blade. I'm using the miter gauge and I've set the height of the blade at just a little bit lower than a quarter of an inch. I'll make one pass on each side of the leg. Now I can use a straight edge to find the center of the leg and mark it with an awl. This mobile workstation has become a great addition to the shop and it's a good spot for my small lathe. I find myself using it more often. If you want to build this project, I'll have a link to the plans in the description below. I've got the leg positioned in the lathe and I'll measure up two and five eighths of an inch and then use the square to square across. That's where my cylinder is going to begin. And when I shape the leg for this little detail, I'll come in here like this and then create this little dome. I really don't have a lot of experience with a wood lathe. So a small project like this is a great way to get some practice and it's not really that critical. If you were to look close, none of these legs are going to be exactly the same. Now that I have all of the legs turned on the lathe, I'll set up a stop block on the miter saw and cut the legs to their final length of 21 and a quarter. And that will cut away the center guide that I needed for the lathe. With the legs cut to length, the next step is to cut a 10 degree angle chamfer on each side of the leg. It doesn't seem like much, but I think it makes a big difference. To cut that chamfer, I'm measuring down an eighth of an inch. I'll make a mark and then set up a stop block and make that cut on all four sides. I've set up a stop block so the eighth inch mark on the leg is lined up with the kerf in my sacrificial fence. I'll make the cut and then rotate the leg for the next cut. big thank you to Jonathan Green for sponsoring this project and supporting my channel. I really like having a nice lawn and standing back and seeing how the lawn frames the barn just really makes me feel good. 
I've been using Jonathan Green products for years and one of the products that's really important to me is MagiCal Plus. MagiCal Plus will adjust the soil pH and it also loosens hard compacted soil which is very important to me since I have a lot of clay in my soil. MagiCal Plus and all Jonathan Green soil foods can be used in your lawn, your garden, or in a planter like the one I'm building here. The first 100 customers to visit jonathangreen.com and use the coupon code below will save 10% on MagiCal Plus. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram for Jonathan Green lawn care tips throughout the season. Now that I have the legs made, I'll get to work on the sides of the planter and I'll start with the top and bottom pieces. They measure three and a half by 18 and a half inches long. I'll need eight pieces. So I'll set up a stop block on the miter saw and cut them to length. For the vertical boards on the planter, I'll need eight five and a half by 15 and a quarter and eight three and a half by 15 and a quarter. Again, I'm going to set up a stop block on the miter saw and cut the boards to length. Before I assemble the sides of the planter, I'll drill pocket holes on the inside of these two outside pieces so I can attach the sides to the legs with pocket hole screws. I've put two of the sides together and I wanted to point out that when I drilled the pocket holes, I made sure to stagger the holes so when I'm attaching the sides to the legs, the screws don't potentially run into each other. Now let's go ahead and assemble the next two sides. The first step is to measure and mark to pre-drill holes for the screws. When I'm assembling the sides of the planter, I'll put the two longer three and a half inch wide pieces down first, then the shorter three and a half inch wide pieces, and make sure that the pocket holes are facing out. Making sure that I'm flush on both sides, I'll tack the parts together with an inch and a quarter nail. Next I'll attach the five and a half inch pieces in the center and I'm just going to eyeball the spacing. Now I'm ready to attach the legs to the planter and to help me do that I'm using half inch shims. The shims are going to bring the inside of the planter up flush with the legs. I'll use a little wood glue, clamp the parts in position and attach the legs with the blue Craig screws the blue screws are rated for exterior use. I'll attach the sides an inch and a half from the top of the leg. Now I can join the two sides together to make the box. I gave the legs and the end grain a coat of primer and the next step is to make a piece of molding for the top and for the bottom. I'll rip the molding for the top of the planter at an inch and seven eighths and the molding for the bottom of the planter at an inch and a quarter. I'm using a cove bit in the router to make the detail in the molding. Before attaching the molding, it's a good idea to prime the end grain. Drawing a reference line for your nails will help prevent blowouts.
Okay, that was the last piece of molding, but I still need to add a cleat at the bottom of the planter to support the bottom. I'll rip the cleats at one inch. I'll tack the cleats in position, making sure they're flush with the vertical boards from the sides before using screws for a stronger joint. For the bottom of the planter, I'm using three pieces of one by six cedar cut to 18 and three eighths. Okay, and that was the last cut in the build, and the only thing to do now is a little sanding and a few coats of high gloss black paint. Okay, well, I am really happy with the way these turned out. And if you wanna see what they look like once they're planted, be sure to follow me on Instagram. That will be happening sometime in the next few weeks. And don't forget, you can get the free plans for this project. Just subscribe to my website. And do me a favor, go over to the Jonathan Green YouTube channel. I'll have a link in the description below. Check out some of their informative videos and leave a comment and let them know how you found them. I'm really excited to be working with Jonathan Green. Obviously, I'm kind of a lawn nut, and so it's just a, it's a real natural fit, and it's easy to work with them because it's part of my workflow. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Before you start your next project, visit my website and check out my professional woodworking plans. The detailed instructions along with material lists and free video tutorials on YouTube will help you build a project that will last a lifetime.